So we published um, a report about two weeks ago that looks at uh, retroactively what happened in the market for healthcare in the last five years. Uh, we also talk about what now, what are some learnings that early stage companies can take from this, and then some emerging trends that, uh, or emerging roadmaps that we're investing behind right now. But before I get into some of the key takeaways of the report, we'd be curious to see who in the audience was investing in healthcare three years ago during COVID. Raise your hands. All right, and who is still spending time in healthcare right now? All right, good amount, that's great. <laughs> we're, all, we're all bullish, even though it's had a hit in the market. And uh, similar to what our colleagues in FinTech were saying, we're still very bullish and we wanted to do all of this analysis to really understand what are some learnings and takeaways that we can get from the public cohort of companies that uh, basically went public in the last few years. And then what are some learnings that the early stage companies that will be that next cohort of public companies will need to take before that IPO market is open. So I'll ask you to bear with me because I know you're all seed investors. Why are we talking about the public market? But I, I promise you that there's gonna be a few good nuggets of wisdom in here. As you know, health tech funding has hit a low um, in the last year. But if you look at the big picture, we predate the birth of the industry to two big regulatory acts called the High Tech Act and the Affordable Care Act back in 2010. And the amount of capital that's gone into our industry has 6X six, six since 2012. When we started investing in, in health tech or revamped our, our healthcare roadmap, um, there are three big North Stars that we look at any investment when we're, we're looking at healthcare. One is valetization, two is uh, digitization, and three is consumerization. And coming off the heels of COVID, there's still big trends that are still relevant despite COVID not being, I guess, the main, main top of mind issue right now. Number one, I think dealing with the pandemic showed a lot of cracks in our system of how we couldn't take care of different patient populations, really how we weren't digitized, um, and, and a lot of things falling through the cracks. Number two, healthcare is now $4 trillion, or we joke this thousands of $1 billion market. Um, and then there's also a huge rising cost trend that we need to think about how we, how we change that with one, technology, and two, new business model development. And then lastly, I think during COVID, consumers really learned how to think about their health, number one, and then two, how they can use technology and access healthcare from, uh, from their homes. So the, a lot of the data that I'm gonna share with you today is based on a cohort of 32 companies that um, have been public over the last five years, uh, both from health, healthcare SaaS as well as tech enabled services, and these are some of the logos. Why did we do this? Not because we are public market investors, we're, we're not experts, but we're looking at that cohort of companies as kind of that first group of companies that went public and really thinking about as our industry matures from kind of that awkward teenager years to that next cohort of companies, we are excited to, to think about what uh, the next generation would look like. So showed you this, you can see the underperformance of the sector compared to uh, the cloud and other of the major indices. But if we double click, it really follows three key uh, stages of any hype cycle. The trigger, you look at the bull market <laughs> triggered by the two regulatory um, acts that I talked to you about, and then COVID. Uh, the sector really grew 127%, just shy of what cloud did. But we hit a peak of um, inflated expectations around February of 21. It was the very first sector that actually saw a big decline and didn't uh, recover like cloud did at the end of 22. And then we think that we're the trough of the solution meant. Um, why do we think this? I think obviously the public market has been the, is likely the first to be in this trough and we don't know how long we're gonna be in the trough. I don't pretend to know uh, the timeline, but we do, we're bullish that the next generation of companies and some of these companies that are already public will be able to make it out of this trough, like in any cycle. Um, if we double click also in subsectors of some of these um, healthcare business models, we've seen that some areas have been more resilient than others. Pharma tech has been a lot less impacted than uh, DDC, for example. But if you double click just in the last uh, 18 months, 
there's been some recovery of some of those sectors as well. And it's been uh, focused specifically on the tech enabled sector side, which was impacted earlier. And we've seen kind of a back impact on, on the software side. But what are some silver linings of all of this data that I've showed and how do we, how are we look at the glass half full from this? Well, number one, uh, there's been $90 billion of market cap created uh, in the last five years, not just from companies that grew in market cap that are, were already public, like Viva um, or Nuance, but also a whole host of companies that went public in this period that uh, we are bullish that this is just going to grow in the, in the future. Number two, about 25% of the market cap of those 32 companies has been acquired in the last 24 months. And specifically, we see incumbents really reacting to some of the big trends on how to deliver better care in a cheaper way at home and value-based care as one, some of those bigger, biggest acquisitions with uh, Oak Street, Signify, and One Medical. And then third, we looked at the incumbent part of the healthcare system and how they performed in the market. We actually broke down the, the subsector, healthcare subsector of the S&P and they uh, overperformed two times the traditional S&P 500. Um, and this is really track, like, <laughs> very correlated to the big regulations that have happened in the market. Uh, some of you may say, what does this mean? Is it regulatory capture? Can early stage companies and innovators take advantage of this? We believe that regulation opens up opportunities for new business model development that we hope we're going to see a new set of companies taking advantage of the different regulations happening. Uh, but the big question is, what are those big regulations that are coming, coming up? And uh, we're always in the lookout to, to see what new opportunities come from it. All right, so what does all this mean for early stage companies, like uh, all of the companies that you're backing right now or that are in your portfolio? So we created this anatomy of a phoenix to really talk about what are the companies that are going to come out of the trough successful. And we outlined five different characteristics here. Uh, all of these are probably similar to other sectors um, as you think about. So I want to highlight a few that we think are particularly relevant for healthcare. Uh, number one, uh, we talk a lot about hard ROI, and a lot of this is financial ROI to the buyer. But number two, we talk a lot about clinical outcomes and clinical ROI. And that we think that the companies that show really strong data here are really going to be successful in the longer term. Number two is uh, regulatory tailwinds, right? We talked about some of the opportunities that come from that. And then just longer term trends and where we see care going is going to be very important for that why now moment versus a lot of the tailwinds that happened during COVID, but perhaps are no longer trends today. And then uh, number three is strong and attractive unit economics. We say that over 80% of the companies in healthcare tend to be tech-enabled services uh, and 20% SaaS. And that's because it's really hard to deliver care and there's a lot of nuances in the processes that go in healthcare. So really focusing on unit economics as this company scale is really important. So how do we translate this into some of the metrics? We've put together, uh, we've done a lot of research. We put together a data set of over 150 companies across both healthcare SaaS and software and tech enabled services. And we've outlined a lot of this in so many reports that we've put out. So if you're interested in, in understanding at the stage that your company is at and the business model, how we think about uh, some of these metrics, I'm more than happy to talk to you um, after this. And then lastly, where are, where are things going and where are we spending time? And this is just a plug to come join my breakout group to chat more about this um, spaces. But these are four um, roadmaps that we're excited about um, investing in currently. Thank you.